Okay, in this video, I'm actually going to install Windows 8 on one of my computers. Now, right now, you can go out and download the Windows Developer Preview of Windows 8. I will put the link in the notes below where you can download and do the same thing that I'm doing here. What I've chosen, I've actually chosen to install this on one of my older machines. I'm going to put it on a Core 2 Duo clocked at 1.8 gigahertz per core. It has 2 gigabytes of RAM in it and currently it's running Windows Vista. So I've chosen the 32-bit version of Windows 8 to download and I'm currently downloading it right now as I speak. There's five minutes left. It's a 2.8 gigabyte download. And Let me scroll down here. It's this one right here, Windows Developer Preview English 32-bit for x86 systems. Now, what I'm downloading is an ISO file, just like if I would download a Linux distribution. It's also in an ISO file. And it's downloading, and once it's downloaded, I'm going to burn it to a disk using Nero disk burning software. You might have a different disk burning software or have access to a different disk burning software. You can use that as well as long as you can burn ISOs to it. So I'm going to burn it to a DVD and then I'm going to bring it up to the computer upstairs and put it on there. Now in addition to the computer being an older computer, I chose it because I didn't want to mess up my newer computer, my, my PC build, or my brand new laptop. I didn't want to put Windows 8 over Windows 7 because I don't want to have to go through the problems. If something, if something happens, I don't want to have to have any issues where I have to reload all the stuff that I took time to load onto those machines. So I'm using my older system because it's older and I want to see how it's going to work on older hardware, but also because it's something that I don't mind wiping clean if I have to. Now another reason I chose it is because it actually is hooked up to dual monitors. So I want to see how Windows 8, when it's loaded on the machine, reacts with the dual monitors, especially with the new Metro UI, and see how it interfaces that way. Now let me just scroll down here. If you look here on the chart here, you can install Windows 8 on a Windows 7 or a Windows Vista machine, and the machine I have is a Windows Vista machine, and you can do it as long as you use the developer preview, not the developer preview with tools. As long as you're just using the developer preview, you can install it over the old Windows and actually keep your accounts, files, and settings. So that's a good thing. So right now it's downloading, got two minutes left on that, and then I'm going to join back up with you once I'm going to actually burn this to a disk, and then we'll continue when I actually install it on the machine. So I'm kind of excited to try this out and try out the new Metro UI. So I'll see you on the other side of this, and we'll get started. Okay, so Windows 8 Developer Preview 32-bit has finally downloaded, and here it is in my Downloads folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double-click on it, and it's going to bring up Nero, and Nero is my disk-burning utility. So this might actually mess with my screencasting software, so basically I have everything set up here as it should be set up. I'm going to insert my DVD into my DVD drive, and then I'm going to click Burn here. Now again, I'm using Nero Express Essentials. If you don't have a disk burning utility, definitely get your hands on this program. It's a great program, and you can actually then burn ISOs to disks, to CDs and DVDs. In this case, I need a DVD because of the size of the file. It won't fit on a CD. So I'm going to burn this, and when I join back up with you, I will be installing it on my Windows Vista PC. So I'll see you then. Okay, I'm up here in my attic with my dual monitor PC, and I have my disk with Windows 8 Developer Preview on it, and I'm going to insert the disk into the computer, and we're going to load up Windows 8 on this machine. Now, one thing I have to warn you about, and that they warn you about on the site where you actually download this from Microsoft, is that the only way to reverse this is to actually restore your computer. So you need the restore disks to restore your computer. So if you don't like Windows 8 or something goes wrong, the only way to reverse it is to restore your computer with your restore disks. So make sure, number one, that you back up everything that is of any importance on your machine because you don't want to lose it. And number two, be prepared that you might have to reload Windows on your machine. 
whether it be Windows XP, Windows 7, or Windows Vista. In my case here, I don't mind if something goes wrong, because like I said, the computer here, I store some stuff on it, but it could be wiped off. It's not that big of a deal. I have it backed up somewhere else. So I'm just going to insert the disk right now. Now, being that this is a dual monitor computer here, I can't do a screencast on it per se, and I really wanted to do this on a dual monitor just to see how it's going to work with Windows 8. But uh, if you can't see it here, I have an autoplay window that opened up and it allows me to run the setup exe file here. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to hit continue. All right, it says Windows preparing. I got uh, 68%, 77, 86%, 96%. Okay, we get a dialog box over here that says Windows Developer Preview Setup get the latest. These updates to Windows setup will help make the installation smoother. Go online to install updates now, which is automatically clicked on and it's recommended and I'm going to do that. And then down below at the bottom of the window it says I want to help make the installation of Windows developers preview better and it's a checkbox there. So might as well leave that checked and I'm going to click next here and it's checking online now and then checking my PC. Okay, it says license terms. So basically this is another EULA here. Of course I'm going to agree to the licensing agreement here, otherwise I can't use it. And then I'm gonna hit accept over here. What would you like to keep? User accounts and personal files or nothing? I'm gonna keep as much as I can, so I'm gonna keep the user accounts and personal files. I'm gonna hit next. Now it's checking if I have to do anything first. Hopefully I don't. Okay, it says ready to install. While Windows Developer Preview installs, you won't be able to use your PC. To recap, here's what you've chosen to do. Windows Developer Preview, check and keep my accounts and personal files, check. Let's do it, let's install it. Installing Windows Developer Preview, this might take a while. Your PC will restart several times before we're done. And excuse the humming, but I'm in my attic here and it's sort of like a little man cave up here and I have a little refrigerator right next to this computer here so that's probably the noise you're hearing. Okay so we have the Windows Developer Preview splash screen here and it's preparing the computer and it's at 10 percent right now. Now it says setup is updating registry settings. Now it says preparing and getting devices ready and getting system ready. Now it says preparing and applying user settings. Okay, it said let's go through the basics. It brought up my wireless network and now it wants me to sign into my wireless network. So I'm going to sign into the wireless network and I'll see you on the other side of that. Okay, so I connected to my wireless network and already you notice the difference in the way it looks. It looks like the Windows Phone 7 phones and basically the Metro UI, Metro user interface. Very different from the Aero interface that was found in, in regular Windows. So this screen here says settings. You can get through some basics quickly by choosing these express settings. This PC will occasionally send info to Microsoft to help make things run more smoothly in Windows. Windows Developer Preview will send some info to help make Microsoft software, services, and error reporting better. Express Settings. Automatically install important and recommended updates to help protect my PC. Sounds good. Help protect my PC from unsafe content, files, and websites. Send us info to help make Windows and location services better. Check online for solutions to problems. Let apps give me personalized content based on my location, name, and account picture. Enable sharing and connect to devices on this network. And country or region, United States keyboard layout, US. So I'm just pretty much going to use Express Settings. I don't mind. All that sounded fine to me. I'm not going to worry about the little stuff. I'm just going to hit Use Express Settings here. Okay, the next screen says log on. Congratulations, you and your things made it through the move. You can now set up your email address to log on to your user account and connect to things you care about. Sign up for a Windows Live email address. You can put an email in here 
And then to help keep you and your thing safe, we want to confirm it's you. Enter the old password you used to log onto Windows before we begin. So let me put in my email address up here, and then I'm going to put in my old Windows password in here. I assume they're going to have a new way to log in, and I've seen a little bit about it, where you can use pictures or a pin key, but we'll see how that goes when it's presented to us. So let me put in my email address and the password, and I'll see you on the other side of that. Okay, as it turns out, it needs to be a Microsoft email address, something that I have a Windows Live account with. I'm not really interested in signing up for a Windows Live account at this moment, so I'm just going to leave this blank because I can actually skip this. And this part with the password, I can also skip that if I want to continue using the account I started this install with, which was my master account. So I'll just hit skip on this, and it's finalizing my settings now. Okay, so here is the Windows 8 lock screen, and it gives the time, day, and date, and a default picture there. Looks really pleasing to the eye. I like it so far, and from what I understand, I think uh, you swipe this up from the bottom. Now, I'm using a mouse, obviously, with this. This is not a touch screen device. I do have a small icon here, which shows my Wi-Fi strength here. So it shows that I have uh, five bars here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swipe up uh, from the bottom. I'm going to actually drag up and see what happens. Okay, you can drag this up and shoot it to the top. Now I have a guest account, my master account, my tech harvest account, master account, and the tech harvest. I don't know why there's actually two of them there. Um, and there's actually a double of each of them, so I really don't know what that's all about. But um, let's go into the master account, and I'm going to type in my password here. Okay, password is typed in. I'm going to hit submit, and let's see what this looks like. Okay, so here we go. I have the two screens are working, which is cool. And uh, this over here on the right is more of the desktop version because it has a desktop background. And over here on the left is more of the Metro interface. And uh, we have all the different live tiles on there. So I'm going to conclude this video. I'm going to actually break this into two videos because that was the installation portion. And I now know it works on a computer with two screens, which is very interesting. And I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into this and see if uh, I can use anything over here uh, as a desktop and then have the Metro on one side so you get the best of both worlds. But uh, that should pretty much do it for this video. Uh, join me for my next video when I actually delve a little bit deeper into Windows 8. And I'll let you know if there's anything interesting that I've come across. So that pretty much does it for this video. I'll see you next time.